Assalamu alaikum dear students. We are continuing the lectures of sensory system. We have talked about sensory coding and how uh, the nervous system calls for the different attributes of a sensation in which location, duration, intensity, location, and modality type of sensation. We talked about the two classifications of nerve fibers in which general classification as well as sensory classification. We talked about the different components of presynaptic membrane and the differences between uh, the two major types of neurotransmitters in which small molecule rapidly acting and large neuropeptides. So in this lecture, you will be able to explain the postsynaptic receptors and their actions, the electrical events at the synaptic membranes, period of the dendrites or of the soma, the excitatory postsynaptic potential as well as the inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Two chapters, parts of two chapters. We will, so according to the 13th edition title, Chapter 46, these are the pages, and chapter 47, these are the pages. We talked about rapidly acting small molecule neurotransmitters, and you don't have to remember the classification, but you need to remember that examples are acetylcholine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, glycine, glutamate, nitric oxide. Those are the names that you need to remember. These are the names that you need to remember as small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitters. Regarding the neuropeptides, they are mostly the hormones that you have done in endocrinology, in which we have the prolactin, we have LH, oxytocin, and different hormones. You don't have to remember all the names. Uh, talk about few of the very important neurotransmitters. Norepinephrine and epinephrine, are they excitatory or are they inhibitory? Yes, they are inhibitory in some places and they are excitatory in some places. For example, norepinephrine and epinephrine, they are they are excitatory in cardiovascular system. They are inhibitory in gastrointestinal tract. What about dopamine? Think about it. Is dopamine inhibitory or excitatory? It is excitatory in some places of the body and it is inhibitory in the basal ganglia. It's very important to remember that dopamine is inhibitory in basal ganglia and you're going to do the basal ganglia in details. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that is important for inhibition of pain. So it is inhibitory to pain pathway. In the pain pathway, it is inhibitory to higher centers and it might cause also sleep. For MCQs, you need to remember that GABA is inhibitory Glycine is inhibitory, glutamate is excitatory. So the question is why acetylcholine, for example, is excitatory in GIT, it is inhibitory in heart, or epinephrine and norepinephrine, they are excitatory in heart, inhibitory in GIT. It all depends on what? This is an important MCQ. It depends on the receptors. So the receptors can be inhibitory and the receptors can be excitatory. Acetylcholine is a small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitter. It is very important. It is synthesized by combination of choline with acetyl coenzyme A by an enzyme that is called as choline acetyl transferase. Acetylcholine at the nerve terminal, after being released, it is degraded and it forms acetate and choline by the enzyme, very important enzyme called as cholinesterase. Function of acetylcholine, excitatory in some places and can be inhibitory in some places as we mentioned. And remember that acetylcholine is recycled because it is a small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitter. It's not synthesized in the cell body. No, it is synthesized in the nerve terminal in the presynaptic membrane itself, and there is recycling. Now, nitric oxide is very different from other neurotransmitters. It's gas, so it diffuses through the lipid bilayer of the presynaptic membrane. It is synthesized instantly. It does not affect the membrane potential. It actually changes the metabolic functions inside the, the neuron. You might have seen some movies in which nitric oxide, uh, it is sometimes uh, when it fills the room, it causes some behavior changes. So yes, it is important for behavior and for memory as well. So these are few of the neurotransmitters that are repeatedly given in MCQs. Now, we talked about presynaptic membrane in last lecture. Let's talk about postsynaptic membrane. Postsynaptic membrane has important receptors. That is the important structure in the postsynaptic membrane. So we have what? We have the receptors. Receptors, they have binding component. Of course, the outside part of the receptor is the binding component, which binds with the neurotransmitter. The part of the receptor that goes through the membrane is called as the ion-4 component. Ion-4 can be in the form of channels, or it can be as a globular protein that goes through the membrane, uh, which is called as second messenger 
activator. Ion channels are called as ionotropic receptors, and the second messenger activators are called as metabotropic receptors. Now, the ion-4 component or the channels, the channels, as you know, they can be cation channels, sodium, or can be potassium, or they can be anion channels in which chloride channels. Of course, you know that chloride channels are inhibitory because influx of chloride causes hyperpolarization and inhibition. Whereas sodium channels are excitatory, if there is influx of sodium, so there is excitation. Potassium channels are inhibitory because there is efflux of potassium and there is, so the positive ions, they leave the, the, the membrane and there is hyperpolarization again. Regarding the second messenger, Metapotropic receptors, what they do is they activate the G protein. Now, have a look at this question. What is the difference between changes in the neuron brought about by opening of ion channels and by activation of a second messenger? Because activation of the second messenger will be by the ne large neuropeptides. Opening of channels will be by small molecule rapidly acting. Yes, opening of ion channels, usually this is very fast and lasts for little time, whereas activation of Second messenger, this is a prolonged action. So actions because of the activation of second messenger, actions by the neuropeptides are prolonged for longer duration. Whereas actions by the small molecule rapidly acting, opening of ion channels is for short duration. Now, which ions movements will cause excitatory both synaptic potential? Which ones will cause inhibitory both synaptic potential? We have talked about this. Influx of sodium causes excitatory both synaptic potential. Efflux of potassium causes inhibitory both synaptic potential. Influx of chloride causes inhibitory postsynaptic potential, as we mentioned here. So let's talk about G protein. This is G protein. G protein is composed of three subunits, alpha, gamma, and beta. When it is activated, the GDB is replaced with GTP, triphosphate, instead of diphosphate. And the, the alpha subunit detaches from the G protein and does one of four actions. What are these four actions? Either activation of the, either activation and opening of the channels. However, this time the opening of channels is prolonged for prolonged duration, not like the rapidly acting small molecule. Because rapidly acting small molecule also opens the channels. However, the opening of channels in that case is for short duration. The opening of channels in case of activation of the G protein, you can see it is for long duration, duration because second messenger actions are always prolonged. It can also cause activation of adenyl cyclase, transmembrane enzymes. It can cause activation of the intracellular enzymes. It can cause activation of gene uh, transcription ultimately causes formation of new inhibitory or excitatory receptors. So these are the actions of G protein. So let's see what happens at the presynaptic membrane and then at the postsynaptic membrane. Now at this presynaptic membrane, if there is no presynaptic inhibition, what will happen? As you remember, even from first year, action potential comes to the presynaptic membrane, opens the calcium voltage gated channels, influx of calcium, movement of the secretory vesicles which contains the neurotransmitter to the presynaptic membrane and release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic plate. Now, what about if there is inhibition? There is something we call as presynaptic inhibition. So can you think of how presynaptic inhibition can take place? Presynaptic inhibition, it means that the action potential that is coming to the presynaptic membrane, it is neutralized. So think about it. When would there be presynaptic inhibition? There will be presynaptic inhibition when the positivity inside the presynaptic membrane is neutralized because actually it is the action potential that will cause opening of calcium body-gated channels and ultimately release of neurotransmitter. So if that action potential is neutralized, there will be inhibition. How that action potential that is at the presynaptic mem membrane, how can it be neutralized? By influx of chloride or efflux of potassium. So there are some neurotransmitters, for example, GABA, which act on both presynaptic and postsynaptic membrane. So at the presynaptic membrane, what they do is they cause influx of chloride or efflux of potassium, which leads to decreasing the positivity inside the membrane. So the action potential is neutralized, 
So no action potential, no opening of calcium voltage gated channel, no release of neurotransmitter. So this is at the presynaptic membrane. What about at the postsynaptic membrane? We mentioned that at the postsynaptic membrane, excitation and inhibition is dependent on the receptors. So what if it is excitatory receptors? Now, if it is excitatory receptors, now it depends if it is a small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitter or if it is a large neurobacteria. If it is a small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitter, there will be opening of excitatory type of channels, which is sodium. There will be influx of sodium and hypopolarization, excitatory postsynaptic potential. If there is a, a activation of the excitatory receptors by large neurobacteria, there will be prolonged actions in which either opening of sodium channels, influx of sodium, but for prolonged duration, activation of adenyl cyclase, activation of the intracellular enzymes, activation of transcription of gene and formation of excitatory receptors, new excitatory receptors. Now, what if the postsynaptic membrane is inhibitory? If it is small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitter, it will lead to opening of chloride channel in uh, channels, influx of chloride or potassium channels and efflux of potassium. So there will be hyperbolarization inside the postsynaptic membrane. If it is a neurobacteria, there will be prolonged actions, prolonged opening of which channels? Chloride channels or potassium efflux potassium channels. Or there could be inhibition of adenyl cyclase, inhibition of the intracellular enzymes, activation of gene transcription and formation of inhibitory receptors. So these are the different actions according to the receptor if it is excitatory or inhibitory and according to the neurotransmitter if it is rapidly acting or long-term acting neurotransmitter through the second messenger we have explained in details.